Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning, I'm going to preach to you on what I have entitled, Where is the True Gospel? Amen. 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 Where is the true gospel? Turn your Bible with me to Mark chapter number 16. Mark chapter 16. If you are a Nigerian, chapter 16. <laughs> I always get Onye because he's right here with me. I preach with him. Onye, can you strike it a little bit? Aha. I just want to let the people know you are here. Now raise me up just a little bit, if you like, in the mic. Just a little bit. So I don't get to lose my voice. Mark chapter number... If I haven't lost it already. <laughs> I am reading from verse number 14 all the way through 18. Ah, Jesus. Are you ready for the word of God? My goodness. Later... He appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. Mark 16, I'm reading from 14. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. I wish the world would know that. I wish Bill Maha would know that. I wish Oprah Winfrey would know that. That as real as heaven is, so is hell. That the God who created the heavens, or God who created heaven, also created hell. And Satan and all his cohorts and every child of disobedience or everyone who disobeys God and would not accept the true, true gospel is destined to hell. And that is not a message of hatred. Where is the true gospel? We'll get there. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall or they will recover. Let us all say amen. amen. Today is the third Sunday in the year of our Lord 2015. On the first Sunday, I preached to you about people need the Lord. Now, are you alive? Yes, sir. Were you here? Yes, sir. I preached to you about... Okay? Okay, good. Last Sunday, does anybody remember what I preached about? We are not doing right. We are not... Okay, only, only two and a half people remember. <laughs> We are not doing right. Now, get, get it. First, I spoke to you about the need of the world. I spoke to you that there are people that are perishing. From your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, your schoolmates, all around you, there are people who are perishing. Last week, I spoke to you about the grace God has bestowed on you. Grace you didn't merit. Mercies you didn't merit. And the fact that because God has so blessed you, you cannot sit down while all those who need the Lord. Are you listening to me? And so I spoke to us that we don't have to sit down. We need to step out there with the gospel. Today, I'm speaking to you about what kind of gospel do you have to take out there? Because when I look at our society today, our society has become so hedonistic. 
our society has gotten to a point where we are almost intentional in removing God and replacing God with something else. Right from infancy, right from the time our children are born, if you are the kind that opens the television to them, you know, this community, this, this nation begins to open them up to quote-unquote superheroes. And so, you know what? What we don't understand as Christians is somebody somewhere is sitting as a puppeteer, turning the knob somewhere and changing the minds of our, or, 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 or programming the minds of our children so that they will replace the only superpower that we have with other superpowers. And so, you see, our children know more about, you know, in my time and age, I tell my, chi my, my, my children, that we, we had Captain Planet, right? Yeah. Joe Planet. Go Planet. You know, you know Earth, yeah. Wind, you know, you know those times? Fire. 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 You know, heart. You know, we say all those water. And uh, when all five powers get combined, you know, go, you know, say, go planet. And uh, Captain Planet, he's a hero. He's going to take pollution out of the earth. You know, you remember those times? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are too young, you know, Captain Planet. I have to introduce my children. I say, look at what they show you. Now I want you to know that I point you to God. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Now people know Batman, yeah. Superman, Spider-Man more than they know God. Is it any wonder that you know what people what is cool to our children is what has no what, what does not have God in it? Is it any wonder that what seems to be what we enjoy is, you know, even, even Christian parties, uh, the one that people enjoy is the one God is not in it. That's right. and, and, and I dare tell us the church that uh, when we go to a place and there is a party and we don't play any worldly music, uh, why they can dance all kinds of dance and show all kinds of things, uh, and they say it didn't jump. And so we have our little ones growing up and even adults among us Christians and we don't understand the very, very agenda of God. Because the society has programmed us a certain way. Do you know that there is someone sitting somewhere who decides what we wear? Because in this day and age, you go to church of today, and let me tell you this, what seems to be on vogue is what Hollywood shows to us. And we go to church and what Hollywood portrays is what is cool to us. And if it's not too, if not that short, if it's not cut low, then it's not on vogue. So someone has become a puppeteer. And unfortunately, the church has become a puppet. Uh, I, have, I have an image of, of, you know, I come from a third world country, you know, if I should say that, but we don't use that term. You know. But you remember those days, we had all these kind of <laughs> thing that, <laughs> that all the joints are, are broken up, you know, uh, it, <laughs> some of you remember it. Yes, uh, Kohan. And you pull all the things and it does all those. Now like, imagine yourself being that one, not the one that's pulling, the one being pulled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So you, you see, it is it's 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 hilarious, okay, but, but the issue is that is that the truth of the matter is that that is how actually we are becoming. And not only are we being affected individually like that, but the entire church is being affected. And the church has been affected so much so that in today's world, there are some churches where you dare, you dare not mention the name of Jesus lest you offend someone. That's right. That's right. So we preach a watered down gospel. A, a, a gospel without any spine. A gospel that has no backbone. A gospel with a jelly backbone, spineless, powerless gospel. 
Today, we don't want to mention something that will offend someone. Let me tell you, our Jesus offended many. In fact, he became a rock of offense to many. That's right. That's right. Today, when they brand us haters, we want to just swap that. So, you know, we want to stand in the, in, in, in the middle where one leg is somewhere and another leg is somewhere. Very soon, God will stretch one and we'll see. <laughs> Because you remember what he said. He said, you know, I nevertheless I have one thing against you. You are lukewarm. But I wish you were hot or cold. You know what? I wish you were if you were cold, then I know that you don't belong to me. If you were hot, then I would know that you were on fire for me. But because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. Amen. There are many, many pastors. Without any backbone, who can stand to say that Jesus is the only way to heaven? Many that can stand to declare the true gospel. And this morning I come bringing you the true gospel. That one and only gospel that we have in the holy writ of God. There is no other gospel than the, the, the birth, the life, the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So you have a whole Christian group. That sings and says, uh, we, 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 don't, we don't mention Jesus yeah. in our songs. So, so the world will identify with it. They don't get offended. But let me tell you this. If the person will, will be offended with our Jesus, they can't get into the kingdom. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because if they will be offended with our Jesus, then they have already rejected him. Right. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Wednesday we were watching the, oh my God, those of you who were here on Wednesday, we had, we had a good time. We had, we had, the, 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 I showed them the video of, of Reinhard Bonnke. And, and, and he says something powerful. You know what, the Bible says that we preach Christ and him crucified. We don't preach anything that is just politically correct. We don't preach anything that will make us fit in. Who told you that God brought you into the kingdom just to fit in? Who told you that God brought you into the kingdom so people will like you? Who told you God brought you into, your, into the kingdom so people around you will just, oh, you see, this one, as for this one, is not a fanatic, he's just mild. You are lukewarm, you are not mild. When was the last time you preached the true gospel to someone? When was the last time you carried the gospel with you? And so the true gospel is missing in churches. You know, when I came to this country, maybe before I came, you know, let me talk a little bit to, to the people. Yeah? Let me talk to you a little bit. You know, the days of Farrakhan, okay? I'm not being political or anything, but when, when we had after Malcolm X and Co and, and Farrakhan and all those, uh, uh, there came a proliferation of, of, of some powerful motivational speakers. Are you listening to me? And, and, and people whose words carried so much weight because of the poetry and the, and the, and the way they put sentences together. And, and you know what? It's like if you string a number of words together and it sounds good and appeals to us, you know, just our flesh or something, then we are just, you know, electrified in the church. So, so the people will sit in church and have motivational speeches and they can't even differentiate it from the gospel. And unfortunately, those that preach the actual gospel, sometimes we think it's even boring. Yeah, yeah. Just as we think Christian music is boring sometimes. Yeah. And so we have a world these days, or we have a church these days, that many are preaching messages that have nothing to do with what Christ sent us to preach. And many will sit in church this morning Hear some powerful words. I'm talking about words, not the word. They will hear some powerful words, full of drama and full of poetry and full of all kinds of words and expressions and phrases, and God is not in all those. Do you remember Elijah? Do you remember that when Elijah was there, there was a mighty earthquake? Surely this must be God, and God was not in it. 
And sometimes what we rave about, sometimes what we shout about, sometimes what we scream about, sometimes what gets us electrified in church does not have God in it. Where is the true gospel? Why has the church gone after the world rather than, rather than having the world come after them? Today, we look at what the people of the world wear, what they do, how they live, and we want to be like them. Today, what appeals to the church is what the Lord shows us. And so rather than we going for the church to bring them in, you know, they are coming, they, they are harvesting the church. They are harvesting the church. They are harvesting our children. They are harvesting our youth. Mm. Uh, no, 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 let me, tell, let me talk to you, church. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> Don't say I'm antisocial, but I want to show you something. Okay? When our teachers tell our children that they are going to have a party in school, who decides what kind of music they play? That's right. Who decides the kind of atmosphere? Someone sits somewhere and decides what is normal, and they, they make our children feel that what is normal is different from what we would tell them. Yeah. And so when you tell them that this is not the kind of life that I want you to, they think you are removing them from the normal. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one that would tell me that I'm antisocial, let me tell you, the Bible says, that, and I thank you this morning you mentioned it, that the world is in enmity with the spirit. The flesh is in enmity with the spirit. With the war against one another. Whatever appeals to the flesh is at war with the spirit. And whatever appeals to your spirit is at war with the flesh. Now, whichever you allow to win controls you. So Paul says that there are different kinds of people in the church. There are the carnal and there are the spiritual. And don't make a mistake in thinking that I have received Christ so I am very spiritual. Let me tell you this, you can receive Christ and be very carnal. Where is the true gospel? Where is the gospel that talks about the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, the, the death of Christ, and the resurrection of our Savior?